On the 21st of January, Israeli military stated that it's hit Iranian and Syrian targets around Damascus, including the Russian-made Pantsir S-1 air defense system. The Israeli military statement stated, "...during our strike, dozens of Syrian surface-to-air missiles were launched, despite clear warnings to avoid such fire. In response, we also targeted several of the Syrian Armed Forces aerial defense batteries." It also released footage showing the several Russian-made Pantsir S-1 missile defense systems were taken out. Viewers can check the video in the link provided in the description section below. It's to be noted that on May 10th last year, Israeli fighter jets had taken out Pantsir S-1 for the first time. But unlike Pantsir S-1, destroying a Russian S-400 is a different game altogether. In this video, Defense Updates analyzes why the weapon and tactics employed by Israel to destroy Russian Pantsir S-1 won't work against S-400. We request viewers to watch the video till the end to understand all the aspects. Let's get started. Israel chose not to disclose the exact weapons it used against Pantsir S-1, neither the tactic has been spoken about and rightly so. Some experts have pointed to Delilah missile. Delilah is dubbed as air defense system killer by Israel and is designed from the ground up to hunt and destroy the enemy air defense system. The missile has a maximum range of 250 to 300 kilometers, carries payloads between 30 to 54 kilograms, and can cruise at a speed of Mach 0.3 to 0.7. The missile reportedly has an accuracy of 1 meter CEP. The Delilah is unique as its radar signature is either too small or too large and doesn't match the profile of an aircraft or a missile. It appears as a decoy when being detected by the enemy radar and this could be one of the reasons that it's able to fool Pantsir S-1. It's highly possible that the Pantsir S-1 had exhausted its ammunition as it tried to defend against an overwhelming saturating attack and was taken out after that. There's also a possibility that the radar of Pantsir S-1 was jammed with electronic warfare. Let us now check why this kind of weapon and tactics won't be effective against S-400. Pantsir's S-1 fire control system includes a target acquisition radar and dual waveband tracking radar that operates in the UHF and EHF waveband. The detection range is 36 kilometers, that's 22 miles, and tracking range is 28 kilometers, or 17 miles, for a target with 2 meters squared, 22 square feet RCS. The system has a 360 degree coverage and both the sensors use passive electronically scanned array. There's also an infrared radar that's capable of detecting, acquiring and tracking targets even in low visibility conditions. Though the radar unit is capable, it's nowhere near what the S-400 brings to the table. S-400 uses multiple radars depending on threat perception. The primary one is either the 91N6E Big Bird Acquisition and Battle Management Radar or 92N6E Gravestone Multi-Mode Engagement Radar. These have a range of around 600 kilometers. The main radar is complemented by target acquisition radars like 67N6 Gamma D and 9N6 Protivnik G radars in L band, Nebo SVU in the very high frequency band, and Nebo M and Zebu M in multi band. Nebo SVU and Zebu M is touted to have the ability to detect stealth aircraft. All these radars, especially the primary ones, are very powerful and highly resistant to jamming. The use of multiple radars also lend a high degree of redundancy and the system keeps working even if one is jammed or disabled. And the system keeps working even if one is jammed or disabled. S-400 can track hundreds of targets at a time and engage up to 36 targets at any given moment. The 
Anseer S1 combines short to medium range surface to air missile and anti aircraft artillery in a single platform. The missiles have a range of 20 kilometers or 12 miles. The cannon has a range of up to 4 kilometers, 2.5 miles. S400 is different adversary altogether. It deploys multiple missiles to cover its strike envelope. One short range 9M96E, 40 kilometer, with an active radar homing head, having the capability to intercept targets flying at speed of up to Mach 2.6. Two, medium range 9M96E2, 120 kilometers, with an active radar homing head, having the capability to intercept targets flying at speed of up to Mach 3. 3. Long range 48N6, 250 kilometers, with an active radar homing head, having the capability to intercept targets flying at speed up to Mach 14. 4. Very long range 40N6, 400 kilometers, with an active radar homing head, having the capability to intercept targets flying at speed up to Mach 14. The massive range means that S-400 can not only target the incoming missiles, but also the platform launching them. For example, an aircraft launching the Delilah missile will be targeted even before it's able to launch the missile, since it will have to be well within the range of S-400 when launching the Delilah. The massive range provides another major benefit. The S-400 will have the opportunity to target the incoming missiles multiple times increasing the chance of successful intercept by many folds. The Pantsir S-1 surface-to-air missiles option is the 1257E6 or 57E6E two-stage solid-fuel radio command guided missile. The missiles are arranged into two groups of six sealed, ready-to-launch container tubes on the turret, so it has 12 missiles on board. The missiles have a range of 20 kilometers or 12 miles, max speed of Mach 3.8, and carry a 20-kilogram high-explosive fragmentation warhead. Anti-aircraft artillery is the dual 20A38M 30mm autocannon guns that are fitted with 700 rounds which can either be high explosive fragmentation or armor piercing ones. The maximum rate of fire is 2500 rounds per minute per gun. S400 take the firepower game to a whole new level. Each S400 battery consists of a number of transporter erector launchers tells, and each tell has four launch tubes. In a standard configuration, a single battery has four tells, but there could be up to 16 tells per battery. So depending on the number of tells commanded by the S-400, it can simultaneously launch up to 16 times 4, that's 72 missiles. That means that saturating S-400 battery is very difficult, unlike Pantsir S-1. Pantsir S-1 is not protected by any other system, but S-400 is actually protected by Pantsir S-1. This makes the task of destroying S-400 even more difficult. Trying to destroy S-400 could result in loss of a significant number of aircraft and missiles. A country like Israel will have to commit a massive amount of resources to take out a single battery of S-400, and this may not be a viable and tactically wise decision. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting and kindly provide your feedback in the comment section. This will help us improve.